Here we are in PHP Storm. So the first thing I want to cover is the new PHP spec integration. Um, so let's find a PHP spec project here. There you go. So we've had full PHP spec integration, um, which has been like a really sought after feature. We had hundreds and hundreds of votes on UTRAC, which is our uh, uh, patented issue tracking system. Um, and people really wanted to have PHP spec support. So if you don't know what PHP spec is, it's kind of a behavioral driven design system um, where you write your specs, which are kind of specifications or tests in a unit test environment first, and then you run your code uh, and then obviously everything's read and then you write code to fix the problem. So it's a test driven design sort of BDD tool. Um, and it's it's really gained some pra traction in the last kind of 18 months to two years. And we had a lot of people asking us if we could support it. So we've brought in um, full PHP spec support in 2016.3. So the first thing that's interesting here is I've got a very simple spec. Um, the, there's a, a complete test runner for PHP spec. So if you run in your tests in ID, which is kind of useful, I tend to run my tests in ID now, nowadays rather than in, uh, in a terminal or command line, and mainly because I've got a nice keyboard shortcut, uh, control R, which will run my tests quickly for me, which is kind of handy when you're running a lot of tests um, and you're uh, you know, you run your tests a lot during your development. So it's quite kind of neat to just have a quick uh, command line shortcut to do it. You can add a PHP spec uh, test runner in exactly the same way you would PHP unit or, um, or B hat. So there's just a, a dedicated uh, test runner down here, PHP spec, which is brand new. And you can see it takes really minimal configuration for me. I'm just using PHP spec totally out of the box. Um, and obviously, I don't need to give it really any configuration at all. It just it just knows how to how to set that up. And you will need to configure PHP spec in your settings pane. And um, there's a there's a, a, a settings pane in PHP spec, which is very similar to the one you have for PHP unit, where you just tell a PHP Storm where to find the executable. It's as simple as that. So you can see that I can now run my tests using command R in the same way I can with PHP unit. And you can see that all tests are passed. This is really neat. The other thing that we also get is full code completion and navigation. So you can see that the way that PHP spec works is that it extends the um, object that you're testing or spec in. So what we do here is we say this set state, get status, get status is a method of the class that we're testing. And then we have a matcher. Previously, because of the magic that's used uh, under the hood in PHP spec, we couldn't actually um, infer the class, the methods of the class that you were testing. But now we can. You can see that I can command click straight through to get the um, to the get status method of the class that I'm testing. So we've got full navigation now using PHP spec. If I go back to the spec, you can see that. Um, we also have uh, full navigation for the matches. We can infer the matches now and you can get full code completion. So let's write our own um, uh, new new uh, new spec here. So uh, we should say, let's say it should be, it should get a random status, let's say, just a very simple method. And then you can see that I can say this, get random status. This is the name of the, um, this is the name of the method that I'm effectively testing in the class. Now you can see I get code completion on all my matches. This is really neat if you use PHP spec. And you can see that I can say should be string, let's just say. Really, really simple. There is a point of note here that we will hopefully um, improve in the future. PHP spec is more than just a test you know, test uh, framework. It also is a code generation tool as well. So if I run this from command line, it would ask me if I want to create the missing um, method. Now, in this instance, it doesn't do that because we have to use the no interaction string when we use our test runner at this point. So if I actually wanted to do the code generation, I'd have to run PHP spec through my terminal. Um, so I'm just going to do a barrel vendor bin PHP spec run. And you can say it says, do you want to create the missing method yes please and you can see my tests now fail now i can command click into the code that has just been created and you can see that my code is here so we can just quickly say uh, colors equals an array of colors which would be what red green uh, oh my typing is terrible amber and then we can just say i don't know return uh, colors array rand 
and the input array is colored. So we can just pick a, a basically a single random element in the array and return it. So now if I use my test runner again, control it on, you can see all the tests are passed. So we have full PHP spec integration in, uh, in PHP Storm 2016.3 and expect more improvements um, Expect more improvements around PHP spec when you actually, uh, when we release our 2017 versions. I think this will be a continual improvement over time, um, but this is a really good start. So any questions on PHP spec? Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, question is I don't have PHP spec present when I project, when I click file new project, you wouldn't have, it's a test suite, it's not, like a framework in the same way that you would say a new uh, WordPress module or a new um, Joomla uh, module, it, you would you would add it using the, um, the it's a run configuration, so you need to add it using the edit configurations drop down. Okay, well we're in this PHP spec uh, project. It's a good time to um, mention uh, another very very popular feature in 2016.3 a very sought after feature and that's the ability to have multiple projects in the same frame uh, lots of people have asked for this this is one of our kind of most voted on tickets across the whole um, range of the platform because obviously we have multiple ids that share the same core platform um, and we can do that really easily now so if i just if i can actually not go into my second monitor and say file and then open. Note at the moment you actually have to manually open a project. And then if I go to www, let's open up this 15M demo project. You can see that it now asks me if I want to open in a new window, open in the current window, and add to currently open projects. Um, if you've had this project open before, when it kind of clashes with an existing project you're trying to add it to, you'll get a little warning saying oh, this doesn't look like it's compatible. Are you sure, you know, do you want to open this in a new window instead? If you hit no, it will override it and, and this project settings will override uh, the, um, the, the the project that you're bringing in. And when I say the settings, I don't mean like the, the run configurations or anything. I just mean how the, the panes and the actual physical um, view of your IDE looks. So you can see now I have both of these projects available in the, in the same frame, which is pretty cool. Um, a point of note here, the, the first project that you attach all the other projects to, we call it the primary project, and all of the settings for the ID for PHP Storm will come from this um, first project. So if you have configurations like uh, your interpreter, or and, and these two should be running on a different interpreter because they run on different um, remote environments or different containers, you'll need to, you wouldn't be able to open them in the same project because all of this project will share the settings for this project when it comes to, to the run configurations. And that's definitely worth knowing. If you want to detach the project, it's just a simple case of right clicking and then saying remove from project view. Yeah, and we want to detach that. And away we go. Okay. So, next up, which again, I really think this is pretty cool, is um, the, the new Docker integration. So if I use command back tick to move to a project which has some Docker integration, here we go. So this is just a really simple Laravel project that I've um, been messing around with. Um, don't judge me on the code, but you can see that it does have Docker integration. It has a Docker file and it has a Docker directory. So this is just a typical, um, Docker Compose setup, very, very simple. Uh, nothing kind of major or exotic here. But what we can now do is we can use Docker uh, containers as our remote interpreters, which is really useful. So we can use a Docker container, um, point, point to a Docker container, point to a PHP installed in that Docker container, and use that container as our remote interpreter for running unit tests or anything else that we need an interpreter for, like um, so stuff like PHP CS, PHP mess detector, all those kind of things, we can use a remote um, Docker interpreter, which is really neat. So how do we do it? Well, uh, the first thing that we need to do is to, to look in our PHP interpreter. So just to show you, I'm using um, PHP, I'm using PHP 7.1 locally installed. PHP 7.1, which released last week i believe so exciting times so if i just close this and then uh, command r again i've got my unit tests configured very simply you can see that everything runs fine php unit runs perfectly but i'm using a local interpreter so let's change that to use the docker interpreter that we have 
pre-configured in our Docker file. So all I need to do is say dot, 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 and then I want to add a new interpreter, and it's going to be a remote interpreter, and I'm going to use Docker. Now, you can see that I have already have a pre-configured Docker um, install, so to speak, and that's really easy to configure as well. We just need to uh, look in here, and it's in deployments. Because I can never remember where you find anything, I just end up typing it in the box. There you go. So you can see this is really easy. I'm using Docker for Mac. Uh, you can see everything's running uh, fine. There's my Docker. Docker's running. I'm just using standard Docker for Mac. Um, so I don't use a Docker machine anymore. I've, I'm using the actual um, pre configured binary from Docker. And then the point of note here that you need to know, let's close that so you can see this, is because I'm using Docker for Mac, and only if you're using Docker for Mac, there's a little um, hack you need to do to get um, the Docker uh, socket running correctly, basically. And it's just a small program called SoCat that maps one thing to another. I don't really understand it, to be honest. Uh, I'm not that kind of a network whiz, but it's a really simple thing to do. Um, so then I can use this TCP URL. But you can see everything's just compo uh, composed here. It's very simple to set up. I'll, I'll send out a tweet from the um, PHP Storm account uh, after the webinar to give you a link to the documentation on how to get that to work. So if we go back to our um, PHP, if we go back to Languages and Frameworks, PHP, and we want to add a new interpreter. And as I said, we just want to add a new remote interpreter and we want it to be Docker. So we just click that box and you can see it's picked up the settings from the deployment that we already have. And if you look in this drop down, you'll see a list of my containers. Um, yeah, I have tons of none, none, and I don't know why that is. I probably should look at that, but it's picked up the correct container for me anyway from the Docker file. So you can see everything's worked fine there. So if I just click OK, you'll see that it'll communicate with the container and check it can detect everything. And it's detected that I have PHP 7.0, and there's my configuration file, and I have no debugger. Nice. So I'll just apply and OK that. Now, um, we're using the remote interpreter. It's already done a default path mapping for me. So the project root of the actual project is mapped to slash app slash project, which is nice. And this is the container we're using. We can change these mappings, but it, I find it works absolutely fine as it is. So I'm just going to apply in OK. Now, if I rerun my tests, you'll see that I would expect to get an error because we haven't told PHP unit to run remotely. So it's trying to run it locally, but with a remote interpreter. The bubble tells me that I can fix it by clicking configure. It's the quickest way to get to the right place. So then we say add a new PHP unit settings type by remote interpreter, and we pick the remote interpreter we just configured. And it's as simple as that. Notice how it's, it's pre-configured everything here for me. It said our projects, project root. It said the composer autoload is in the right place. Everything's correct for me there. So if I okay, apply and okay, and then run again. You can see that we'll run our unit test, but we'll run it on the remote Docker container rather than on our local machine. So it's um, really nice and neat. And this works with uh, PHP mesh detector, PHP CS. Uh, I don't think it works with Composer yet, but it's definitely on our roadmap for um, you know for early 2017. Um, so this is again really nice, a really nice way to to use containers, uh, which are very popular at the moment. Let's be honest. So are there any questions on uh, the Docker integration? Okay, cool. So yeah, the, the next thing I, is is um, kind of neat, and, and I was a little uh, skeptical when I read around. So there's, I don't know if anyone's read the blog post um, coding in color, which talks about how you can improve your um, uh, understanding and, and um, I guess uh, how, how you cognitively understand code by changing the colors of variables so that they're the same throughout the code and it's really cool and, and in 2016.3 we've added um, semantic highlighting that does just that so oh quickly before I close this docker um, file how does how does PHP storm uh, get the PHP development files into the Docker container. Um, it will deploy them by the by the Docker configuration because there's a shared um, there's a shared uh, folder effectively in the same way there is with Vagrant. So your web root is shared to opt slash project. So it it's just like a um, a shared network folder effectively in the same way that you would 
normally work with the Docker um, container. So let's go back to semantic highlighting. So I'm going to open up one of my favorite projects for demoing um, semantic highlighting, which is Doctrine 2. And this is Doctrine 2's uh, query builder. So we've got this, you know, this is a hard problem to solve and, and Doctrine does an amazing job of solving it, but it is kind of complex and it is, it does tend to use a lot of variables. So here you can see we've got aliases, and then we've got from clause and then a space pause from uh, alias uh, from blah, blah, blah. So what we'll do is we'll turn on semantic highlighting and we'll see if this makes this code any easier to understand. So to do this, I'm going to open up my seconds pane and command comma. Unfortunately, my presenter mode plugin, which shows you my keys, um, was causing some problems with, uh, with PHP Storm. It's a plugin, a third party plugin. So I decided not to take the risk and to disable it. So you can't see the keys I'm pressing, sadly. Um, but it's command comma is the quick shortcut I'm on Mac um, to get to the preferences pane. And you can see then in editor, language defaults, and then semantic highlighting. Now you can turn this on um, on a per language basis, but I'm just going to use the language defaults to turn it on across the board. So I've turned on semantic highlighting. You can see that basically uh, PHP Storm will pick a color from the spectrum here, from the spectrum we've given here. So each variable will be picked from a spectrum and this is where we set it. Now the defaults are pretty good, if somewhat understated. You may want to edit these to make them more pronounced because as you see, when I click apply, what we don't get is an amazing jump out to this difference in color. We get a very subtle color from the palette that's um, supplied with, uh, with the plugin, but I think I don't think you really need this to be a massive um, noticeable difference because if I want to see where this variable is, I can already do that in PHP Storm by just putting my carrot over it and now it gets hugely highlighted. This is more of a kind of subtle way to help your your you understand code in a more uh, in a in a more kind of behind the scenes manner, I guess is the phrase. My words sound great today. I apologize, but you can see that this is already a little bit easier to understand for me, particularly when you're scrolling through and you're looking at the code. I think that this does help me to understand things um, subtly, and I've definitely left this on after I was playing with it. You know, particularly you can see here that the the code definitely looks a little bit more readable to me, and I do. Genuinely, um, I've gone. I've even gone back to the default um, white background theme that you can see here because I think that it, it really helps me um, to, to understand new code. I do a lot of coding on open source, so I, I do a lot of looking at other people's code, and this definitely helps. So somebody, yeah, I certainly can show you. So uh, if we go back to preferences pane, command comma, I'm in uh, editor, colors and fonts, language defaults, and then I've picked semantic highlighting, and you can just turn it on right here. OK, uh, there's there's either blog po there's a blog post, I believe, on this. If you'd like to, uh, you know, have a little bit more in depth or if you forget how to find the the, the preference pane. Um, so, yeah, take a look on our blog for that. So next up is probably my favorite. Um, if you've. Excuse me, if you follow me on Twitter or read the blog posts or the, the view the videos that you can find uh, on the PHP Storm website. You'll know that I'm a huge fan of PHP 7 and the, the type, particularly the type hinting and particularly the strict type hinting. So um, in in 2016.3, we've built on our um, really cool uh, PHP 7 support. Um, we have full PHP 7.1 support now in time for launch, which is two thumbs up nice. Um, but there's been some really nice features for PHP 7 as well. So I'm going to pull up um, Zen Service Manager, which is a component that I do a lot of work on in my open source um, in my open source life. And one of the things that a lot of people are doing at the moment is converting code bases from PHP 5 to PHP 7. And um, obviously PHP 7 has been out, I think it's been out a year now, and it's got enough ground that people really want the performance wins and people really want the maintainability that the strict type hinting gives them. And um, so if we open up, as in service manager here, you can see that one of the first things that I would do if I wanted to port this to PHP 7 and to use the type hints is to have to declare the strict types at the top of every file. So you would just say declare, oh, if I can type strict types equals one. Now you can see we get code completion there, which is neat. But adding this to the top of every file in a, in a big project is obviously going to be quite painful. So 
Uh, the other problem I find personally is that I keep forgetting to add this to the top of every file. So I think, oh, I'll add that every time I, I touch a new file, but totally forget to do it in some files. So some files have the strict type, some don't. You end up in a position there, which is worse than not using strict types at all, where some files are strict type, strictly typed, others are loosely typed. Oh, it's, you know, you can end up in a world of pain. So, excuse me a second. Sorry, sneezed. Um, so we have now a new inspection that allows us to basically detect whether we have a strict types declaration at the top of each file. So I'm going to use command comma again to go into um, to go into the settings pane, and it's an inspection. But as I said, uh, I, I really can never remember where these things live, which is why we have this the search box in the first place. So if I just type strict at the top here, you can see that there we go straight to the inspections and we have PHP strict standards and type compatibility. Now here you can see missing strict type de declaration inspection. So we can turn that on. I tend to personally set it to error rather than the default warning, uh, just because I, I, like, I like to think of it as being an error because for me having a mix between strict types and loose types is horrible so i want to be shouted at if i forget to do that obviously you can you can set the severity to whatever you want so if i apply that and okay this is exactly what happened last time and this is a small problem in um this release of uh, php storm that i'm using so i'm going to have to shut down this project and, and reopen it to get that inspection to set I'm just quickly going to check that I do have PHP language level set to uh, PHP 7, because obviously this wouldn't fire if my uh, PHP language level was set below PHP 7. So let's just quickly check that. The best laid plans. Yeah, we have uh, PHP 7. We're using PHP 7.1, so that should all work. So I'm just going to quickly uh, check. And no, it hasn't fired. So let's close this down and then go back to PHP Storm and reopen it. I do apologize. And in 2016.3.2, this minor problem is fixed. So I didn't really want to run with the EAP because that could potentially be even worse than uh, me <laughs> just having to do this. So there you go, there you go. You can see the inspections fired now. Um, so you can see, what does it say? Strict type declaration is missing. And as usual, whenever you have the problem, you've got this little light bulb that can fix the problem. So add strict type declaration, which is, I tend to, to fire these using alt and enter, which gives you the same thing, basically. So now you can say add strict type declaration, and there you go. So that's really nice. You get the error at the top of the files. So if you don't have the strict types, say in this interface doesn't have the strict types, you can see there's my error, there's my error. And when you go to push, if you use the VCS, um, integrations, you'll be told that there are errors on the code base. So this is really nice. But obviously, opening every single file and going to the PHP and all that and add strict types is just as painful in its own way. So like every single inspection in PHP Storm, we can go to code and then run inspection by name. And we can run this inspection across our whole code base in one hit. So you can see that I'll just type. So you can see these are all the inspections we have. All the inspections in PHP Storm are available. Um, so they're all there. And we can now say strict type. So missing strict types declaration is the um, is the inspection we want to run. Let's run it across our whole project, including the test sources. And away we go. And you can see that it's immediately found that there's 66 warnings. So all of these files have the missing um, strict type, strict type uh, declaration, which is great. So what we could do is pick, uh, let's have a look here, let's pick bad or PHP, and then we could add the strict type declaration there one by one. But the easiest way to do it is just to pick all 65 warnings, add strict type declarations, and there you go, away we go in one hit. We've added the um, strict type declaration to everything, which is really nice. I really, really like that, particularly because I do a lot of work um, particularly because I do a lot of work with open source and I can see us changing to PHP 7 only branches fairly soon. And this is going to be a real lifesaver. Um, so the question is, how did you get the select inspections dialog? It, the, it's in the code menu and it's called uh, run inspection by name. Uh, command shift alt I is the key combo. So run inspections by name and then it'll just ask you for the inspection that you want. 
Um, so for example, you could run that famous typo inspection across your whole code base if you really wanted. Okay, we've added some other um, minor tweaks to code styles around PHP 7, which was particularly annoying for me. Um, if we go to uh, code style editor, code styles, PHP, we've added in new code styles. So for example, ta um, spaces, before this version, there was no way of you actually um, defining how the return type hint in PHP 7 looked. Now you can say, I want a space before the colon, or I want a space after the colon, or I want neither, or I want both. And there's been another few little um, code style tweaks that uh, have come into PHP Storm 2016.3. Just enough neatness. There's no um, standard, there's no PHP standard or PSR around uh, PHP 7 code styles yet, but I think it's PSR 12 is gonna deal with that. So you will expect to see some of that um, stuff coming through quite soon. So we've been talking about intentions and the PHP 7 declare strip type intention. There's also another really cool um, inspection. I'm sorry, not intentions, excuse me. So there's also been um, some other really nice cool ins uh, inspections added. So here, if you look at this example class, um, what is a pain, particularly when working with maybe legacy code bases or code bases that have become incredibly messy because they've had no, um, maybe you've come into a project where there's been no code review, you could see you know, no standards around naming. So for example, my constant or lower cases, convention says it should all be uppercase. Um, classes, convention tells us they shouldn't be snake case, they should be camel case starting in a capital and functions should be camel case starting in a lower case. So these things are easy to miss as well, particularly during code review or when you're typing yourself, you know, when you're just creating your own um, your, your own code. So we can now use a new inspection called naming conventions. So we're in editor inspections and then in PHP. Uh, obviously, be careful if you're going to use the search facility to find these because JavaScript has them as well. And when I was trying to test this, when we were in, um, in, in the EAP, I was like, oh, they don't seem to do anything, but I'd actually turned on the JavaScript uh, inspections, not the PHP ones. So the developers quickly put me back in my box, but um, yeah, we can turn those on. So you can see class name is not following a coding convention. All we get here is a regular expression that the class name needs to mat match, plus a minimum length, plus a maximum length. That's all there is to it. So if we apply that and then okay, you could see now that we get the warnings that we would expect. So example class should match this regular expression and it doesn't. Um, constant doesn't match and the function name doesn't match. So we can fix these if we wanted to. So for example, changing that to upper case, upper case, excuse me, fixes the problem. Uh, changing that to have a lowercase h fixes the problem. But maybe we're working in a project where our standard is to have camel case class names. It's perfectly valid in PHP. There's no reason why we couldn't do that. Um, so we can uh, alt and enter as normal or click on the little light bulb if uh, if you're that way inclined. But alt and enter is the quickest way to get the any intentions around there. And then we can go right and then say, okay, let's edit that. So all we basically need to do is change the regular expression here. So it should start with an A to Z lowercase character because it's camel case. And then it should have an A to Z or an underscore and it should have more than one, uh, basically. That should fix this so that this is now a, um, a camel case, so to speak, pattern. Uh, sorry, a snake case pattern. And you can see that's made the inspection go away. But if we did have any upper class letters in there, bang, the inspection warns us. So kind of a nice, neat, new new way of, um, of because um, maintaining consistency in a large code base or any code base is so fundamentally important, then, you know, that's really a key thing to any code base is to make sure that people are consistent and code is consistent. And these inspections are really important for helping that. And while we're in this class, we've added a really small but useful um, improvement around overloading um, in classes. So if we say class my logger, uh, oh, it should extend logger here. It's just got a very, very simple class. 
previously I would have to say protected and then dollar to get code um, to get code completion on the file name uh, constant that I wanted to over overload. Sorry, the not constant property. Excuse me. Now I can just type start typing file name and it'll give me the, the option right there. And the same thing for the method log, it just gives me a couple of extra, you know, characters less needing to type to get code completion when you're extending stuff and overwriting, which, you know, while it may not be um, the most flash um, feature in the, in the whole release, these things that save you small amounts of time can be really, really useful in your daily job. And, you know, that's, that's what we're all about, I think. Yep, a recording of the uh, webinar will be posted on our YouTube channel. Um, follow uh, at PHP Storm on Twitter. They'll tweet when it goes up. It normally doesn't take too long of a turnaround. Um, so I would guess early next week, but I'm not going to um, put the pressure on the people involved there. Uh, but yeah, follow at PHP Storm and you'll see um, a tweet when, the, when this webinar goes live onto YouTube. So I don't know. I love this PHP 7 inspections, but I think for for just um, sheer um, usefulness that this next uh, improvement is probably right up there with my favorite. So if we go back, oh, that was the right one. Sorry, Zen Service Manager, come back. There you go. So um, weirdly, the way that I always work, creating new um, classes and tests has never been that pain free for me in PHP Storm because if I do command N and then new PHP class. Um, yeah, it's great that it, it's trying to kind of estimate where things are, but so for, if I want to create a new class, call it example class, but it's in a new namespace, this has always been a problem in, in, in PHP Storm previous versions. So um, in a new namespace example, you can see that it hasn't prompted to create the new example directory, which it should. If you're using PSR not or PSR 4, then you would expect this to be in a new directory called example. So then you'd have to come down here and do that yourself. And in previous versions, if I hit OK now, it wouldn't create the directory. It would say, oh, that directory doesn't exist. So then we had to click the three dots and go in and create the directory. And it was like fairly painful, but this new release really helps. So the trick to get into painfully free um, namespaced class creation is to make sure that you use the Mac directory feature. So you should use this anyway, because PHP Storm works a lot better when you tell it what directories contain what types of code. So we can right click on our source directory, which is the namespace root basically for our entire um, project. And then we can mark directory as a sources root. And we can do the same thing for test. We can mark directory as a test sources root. Fortunately, that's not quite enough because the classes in the source directory are in the namespace Zen Service Manager and classes in the test directory are in the namespace Zen Test Service Manager. So what we want to do here is to tell PHP Storm that these are namespaced root directories, not just um, source directories. So to do that, we can uh, just go to the uh, command comma again to bring up to quick bring up the preference pane and then go to directories and you can see it's picked up what we've marked so for the sources folder we want to tell php storm that this is in the namespace zend uh, service manager and click ok and for the test we want to do exactly the same thing and say this is in the zend test service manager namespace and click ok so now php storm knows that these folders are um, source folders and what namespace that the the code in them is is in, and now everything just works really really smoothly. So you can see if I now um, create a new class and call it example class and put it into a new namespace that doesn't exist, you can see that it's automatically been added down here into the into the directory path. And when I click OK, it just creates that directory for me and um, creates the class for me, which is great. Um, more useful now is that if I use um, my mappings for this uh, key are wrong. Notice how I've left on the strict types declaration. Uh, so PHP Storm is shouting at me from the earlier demo. Um, the default mapping, I believe, is Command Shift and T to move to the test. I have it as Command Shift and U because I use Command Shift and T um, for something else globally across my system. It actually allows me to tweet quickly, which is kind of sad, but there you go. Um, if I go to create new test, you can see that 
okay, it doesn't pick up the right namespace, but as soon as I change the namespace to the right namespace, it knows where to create it now. So it's saying I'm going to create it in the test folder because I know this is the test source for the Zen test namespace. And again, it's, it's filled everything in for us correctly, except for this namespace. Um, I could have picked it from the dropdown. But when I then click OK, it doesn't actually prompt me to create anything. It creates everything in the right place. This has saved me so much time in 2016.3. And again, because I'm a strict types uh, fanatic, I need to add that in. Um, I kind of should change my default class and test templates to include the uh, strict type declaration off the bat. I guess I'll do this when that webinar is finished. So this is really saving me loads and loads and loads of time. And just to prove this works, if I run the unit test suite, you can see no tests found in, in the test class because I don't have a test here. Um, so we can quickly fix that by saying uh, pubf test something is true. Self assert, oh, assert true, true. And now if I run the tests, you can see they're all green. So this is a really, really, really useful um, improvement to, to the latest version, I think. Um, so are there any general questions? I kind of covered off everything I'm really interested in demoing at this point. There's a few other bits and bobs, um, but I don't see any more questions. Uh, I'll give it a quick 30 seconds or 20 seconds in case anyone is typing. And... Okay, yeah. Um, uh, so the question is, is there more come in with regards to Docker Compose and Docker? Yes, uh, I, I would see us constantly iterating on, um, on, on making and making Docker functionality uh, improved uh, because it's, you know, it's really hot at the moment. Um, it's kind of the new, it's kind of vagrant for the, <laughs> for 2016, 2017. So, uh, yeah, I would expect to see more improvements on Docker Blade. Um, sorry, on Docker Compose. Uh, the next question is: Any ideas when there are Laravel blades in text highlighting will be fixed? Sorry, I, I genuinely do not know anything about that particular ticket at this moment. Um, feel free to ping me uh, on uh, Twitter at gwh after, and I will take a look at the ticket and reply to you there. Uh, We have a question, a question regarding improvements um, about the configuration related XDBug. Okay, I, I don't really know what you're asking. I apologize, uh, Domingos. Um, if you're using 2016.1, you should definitely upgrade to two or three because uh, debug configuration is constantly improving. Um, but 2016.1 should have zero. Uh, zero config debug. So um, again, feel free to ping me on Twitter or um, at or ping at uh, PHP Storm on Twitter to get any uh, help you may need to configure X debug. Kind of out of the scope of this webinar, to be honest. A uh, question about changing the default templates. I tell you what I'll do is tomorrow I will record a video and show exactly how I change the default templates to uh, include the extra information that I want. Um, I'm not going to do it right now because we are fast running out of time, but that's a really good idea for a video. So, uh, Joel, I'll, um, I'll try and get, well, I will get that up before the end of the week. Uh, again, follow at PHP Storm and they'll tweet when that video goes up. Cool. So, uh, yes. Uh, so, Tyus, I think is your name. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, PHP Storm can use the uh, PHP interpreter inside a Vagrant virtual machine in the same way you can Docker. Um, this this release and this improvement in Docker kind of brings Docker in line with the support we've had for Vagrant previously. So, yes, that will work. Cool. So if we go back to my awesome, oh, hello. That doesn't look so good. Okay. So um, there's some other um, improvements that I would just like to quickly mention. Um, Basic, uh, so we, we've had it added a new configuration option that allows you to 
double double click on variables and select them but without selecting the dollar this is i i don't really understand the benefits of this if i'm honest um because it's not something i would particularly use but it was a requesting feature via our u track system so uh people wanted it so it, it's been added in 2016.3 We've improved anonymous classes support. Again, anonymous classes aren't something that I've really found a huge use for. Um, I know some people are using them uh, for uh, easy kind of mocking around unit tests, but we've we've got better understanding and support of anonymous classes, which is nice. Um, arrays of understanding of arrays have been improved, particularly around things like arrays of objects and support for lists, because we understand how arrays are built better now, how arrays are assigned better. Um, when you do things like list, you get better code completion after you've extracted arrays into variables, and you get better code completion around these arrays of objects. And as with every major release, um, which is fantastic because we're using the IDEA platform, we've had our improved database, um, uh, imp improvements around the database tool, thanks to the data grip team, and improvements around the JavaScript libraries we support thanks to the WebStorm team and improvements around version control and Git and all the other VCS stuff, thanks to the core team. So we've got some improvements around all of those areas. If you'd like to know more about the database stuff or the um, arrays of objects, or anonymous classes or anything I've mentioned, then you can go to jeffbrains.com slash phpstorm slash what's new um, to find out uh, more in-depth information about those areas. You could download a trial. So if you're not using PHP Storm and you've jumped in this uh, webinar just because you wanted to learn a bit more, then give PHP Storm a try. You can download a month's trial at uh, jetbrains.com slash PHP Storm. For more information, um, yeah, jetbrains.com slash PHP Storm. You can definitely give us feedback on Twitter. If you want to tweet either myself personally at GWH at GH um, or at PHP Storm, we absolutely love to hear your feedback, good or bad. We love you to say thanks. These new features are awesome, or uh, this still isn't working properly. Either way, um, the team loves to hear your feedback. Um, if if uh, 160 characters isn't quite enough, I think my DMs are open, so um, you can DM me. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, we'll put this recording up, but on our YouTube channel, which is YouTube.com/JetBrainsTV, fairly soon. Um, Oh, I have a duplicate uh, bullet point. Um, and the, the blog is always a really, really good resource, which you can find at blog.jetbrains.com slash phpstorm. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, we will um, almost certainly be having another webinar after Chris uh, in the new year. Um, and we'd be interested to know what kind of topics you'd be interested in us um, uh, webinar uh, provide a screencast on. So again, get in touch and let us know what you think. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, I'll see you all soon.